Thank you very much, Paul. <coughs> and uh, thank you all for being here this afternoon to talk uh, Capella Metals. We're a new company. We started last year to acquire what is one of the largest exploration packages in the Mount Isa region. And we're right in the heart of the Mount Isa region. It's a genuine tier one location in terms of uh, prospectivity and jurisdiction, and prospectivity particularly for copper. So we have several high-grade copper gold deposits on our tenure. We have multiple uranium targets on our tenure. And thirdly, we have the large-scale discovery potential in this part of the world. We do have a couple of key greenfields discovery targets, which I'm excited to, to talk through. All right, so we've got 2,000 square kilometres of tenure. We're right in the, the heart of the Mount Isa region. We have multiple high-grade copper deposits, including the Surprise Mine, where we've got historical hits up to 24 metres at nearly 5% copper. We've got dozens of uranium targets on our ground. The ground was held by uranium companies in the last uranium boom. A lot of good work has been done. We've got an initial modest uranium resource. We've got walk-up drilling targets, high-grade rock chips up to 2.86%. And we have the same regional scale structures that control the location of the Mount Isa ore bodies extending onto our ground. They're our immediate neighbours to the south. So we do have a real crack at finding the next Mount Isa. Uh, the board, we have a great depth of experience with running exploration companies and with discoveries under our belt, including working in the Mount Isa region and uh, in, in these copper, copper uh, belt hosted deposits. And our IP at listing of just $3.8 million means there's a lot of value left on the table for new investors coming into the IPO so that as we do the work and get the rewards uh, results, the, the shareholders stand to be rewarded. This is where we're located, where the white tenement package in the middle, uh, we're immediately next door to Glencore, they're the bright blue tenements. Uh, to the north of us in light blue, 29 metals. So we've got 50 kilometres of strike in between Glencore and 29 metals. To the southeast of us in the yellow and purple colours, that's Carnaby and Hammer. So they have similar style uh, geology. Uh, Cooper's down there to the southeast of us. And we're surrounded by other mining operations and explorers. And we're also surrounding Paladin's Valhalla project. They've got 150 million pounds of uranium. They're the dark blue uh, tenements uh, that we're surrounding there. Uh, but, you know, despite the location right on Mount Isa's doorstep, the, the, the tenement package is really only lightly explored. And I know everybody says that, but in this entire 2,000 square Ks, there is only about 25 holes that have been drilled for copper on that entire 2,000 square K package, and I'll show you what I mean about how underexplored it is. So the exploration strategy is in three parts. Firstly, we'll be targeting those high-grade copper gold deposits, like the Surprise Mine. This is very similar to what our neighbours, the Carnabies and Hammers and Coopers, have been exploring happily for the last few years and getting good market traction when they're putting out good results. Uh, so some of the high-grade hits that we've got there, uh, 24 metres, 5%, 3.5 metres at, at nearly 10% copper at shallow depth. The second part of the strategy is exploring for those giant discoveries, and the two key targets there are Conglomerate Creek and Calton Hills. So I have a couple of slides to show you shortly. And thirdly, the third part to the strategy is the uranium. Uh, all those blue targets on the map, they're the uranium uh, anomalies, and they've been found in the past with radiometric surveys during previous booms. And uh, Pal uh, Paladin and, and Deep Yellow used to hold this ground, so they've done a lot of good work in the past. Um, Valhalla has 150 million pounds of uranium uh, in that resource. So it's the third largest uranium project in Australia after Olympic Dam and Javaluka, based on the, the resources in the ground. Those are some of the uranium hits that we've got pretty, uh, pretty nice wide intersections at good grades. 
um, and you know, rock chips up to 2.86% and high grade internal zones. So the high grade copper gold deposits, this is what Surprise Mine looks like. It's that pit, it's about 100 metres long, five metres wide, pretty scrappy looking thing. It was last mined a few decades ago and this looks really identical to when you look at the photos of what our, our neighbours, Carnaby and, and the others are exploring, this is what they look like. And when you go back to them and you drill underneath them, you find they find the high grades, they just keep on going. These deposits have got incredible down plunge continuity to them. So in the past uh, 100 years ago, they mined the 20% high grade material. Uh, and then in the 70s and the 90s, they came back and they were mining the 10% copper material. There's also significant gold grades have been produced, sort of two to four grams gold. And now, of course, the 2% materials of economic significance. So that's what we'll be chasing up. Uh, those, most of those intersections there in that list are from the 1970s. They don't have copper, uh, uh, sorry, they don't have cobalt. They don't have gold assays. They're only, they're only, um, they've only assayed for copper. So there's the whole element suite, um, particularly gold with the potential for additional um, metal credits. Uh, we took some grab samples from the ROM dumps uh, recently and getting really high grade copper, and we deliberately picked the juiciest looking samples just to see what other interesting elements might be in the suite and we're getting good rare earth results. Um, there is a rare earth signature through the whole region. Don't know what it means yet uh, in terms of whether there's any economic significance to that, but they are there, so I think that's interesting. Looking at it in a cross-section view, that's the uh, old drilling around the old pit. Uh, it's a nice steeply dipping geometry um, and good grades sitting below the limits of the previous mining. In plan view, uh, you can see the holes around the, the pit there. Further along strike, there's copper in soils, there's high grade copper and gold in rock chips and there's also a VTEM anomaly sitting to the south of the pit. Uh, in between the pit and the road, uh, which has never been drilled before and it's never been mined before. And just for comparison with our, our neighbours, Surprise on the right hand side there, that chart shows how Surprise has only been drilled down to 80 metres below surface, whereas the others now, they've been drilling for a few years and finding these deposits keep on going, they're drilling now down 500 metres, 800 metres below surface. And of course, Ernest Henry, uh, similar style of geology, that's now down at 1,800 metres and it just keeps on going. We do have a pipeline of these deposits. Julius is another example. Uh, high grade copper rock chips. Uh, that sample there graded 39.5% copper with a reasonable gold and silver as well. So those high grade rock chips are sitting in pods just to the south of a, a prominent uh, structure. So it's never been drilled before despite those rock chips and the approach here will be a IP survey to map out where the uh, chargeable zones are sitting at depth before we drill it. Moving on now to the large scale discovery targets. Uh, this is what I get really excited about and from my time working at Mount Isa in the past and I could see when the opportunity arose to acquire this ground the opportunity here with the same structures that host the Mount Isa ore body extend onto our ground. We've got 50 k's of the Mount Isa fault, 30 k's of strike of the Peru fault, the same geology. But the question I ask is where, where are all the other Mount Isas? It's by far the biggest copper deposit in the region. It's you know, several times bigger than the next biggest one, which is statistically doesn't make sense. Normally you're going to get a cluster or of, of bigger deposits. And if you look at the Central African Copper Belt, where, where I spent a few years, there's a cluster of giant deposits. They're all five times bigger than Mount Isa. So there'll be more big Mount Isa sized deposits around. And without getting into the geology too much, uh, just a couple of the key features to keep in mind while we're exploring here. They're structurally controlled deposits. The structures are the important things. The copper fluids come up the structures, they hit a juicy reactive rock type and then they'll drop out the copper. You get a broad alteration halo. You get lower grade hits a long way away from the mineralization, kilometers away from the ore body. So it's important to know when you're in the halo of these deposits 
uh, to zero in on them. The first of the targets, Conglomerate Creek. This is sitting next to a major regional scale structure. That fault has 14 kilometres of strike on it. Uh, we've got a bullseye magnetic anomaly, I'll show you on the next slide. A historical working sitting above that magnetic anomaly. And uh, off to the northeast, those red and pink lines, that's uh, extensive geochem in the streams over a 6K by 6K area, sitting adjacent to that uh, bullseye magnetic anomaly, which you can see on the left. That mag anomaly is 2Ks by 2Ks wide, and we interpret that as a block of the juicy reactive shale rocks trapped underneath the mafic rocks there, uh, and also hydrothermal alteration from the copper fluids, producing that broad mag low. And then adjacent to that, we have the geochem anomaly. Now, that geochem survey was done by MIM in 1967, that data has sat there in company databases and in mines department reports for 60 years. And when you put that together with the regional scale magnetics data that we have now, that's a compelling target. It's never been drilled before. So the approach here will be detailed magnetics and gravity to define the geology and mineralisation at depth before we drill it. So we'll be doing those surveys and drilling this uh, target before the end of this year. The second of the giant discovery targets is Calton Hills. So we have the juicy reactive shales in grey and we have the mafic rocks in faulted contact with them. We've got extensive copper and zinc and lead in the soils, extensive hematite breaches in orange there, uh, historical workings with rock chips up to 1.7% copper and there has been about a dozen holes have been drilled here. They're still quite broad spaced, two, three, 500 metres apart and quite shallow. Uh, Rio Tinto joint ventured into this project. They uh, drilled two holes, one of which ended in four metres at nearly 1% copper, which shows that this system can, can produce potentially economic grades. There's also an intersection of one metre at over 1,000 grams per tonne silver. So this is a large system. It is producing potentially economic grades. Uh, Rio Tinto pulled out of that joint venture after drilling just two holes. And look, I think the, uh, a good analogy here is with the Haveron discovery, and it's a similar type of IOCG uh, deposit, where Newcrest had already discovered Haveron. They had high-grade drilling intersections sitting in their database, but you know what the majors are like. If they haven't found the centre of the ore body with the first hole, they'll move on to other things. So Rio Tinto never came back and followed up that intersection. Um, um, at Newcrest, Greatland Joint ventured in and actually did the same geophysics that we're intending to do here, the detailed mag and gravity, uh, and modelled the ore body and pinged it with their first drill hole. So that's the key here, doing modern geophysical surveys rather than going in blind with the drilling. Although I can see why they've drilled those soil anomalies. Thirdly, the uranium portfolio. Look, we're not going to, uh, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but we do have an initial resource there and dozens of targets that were defined in the last boom. Uh, and it's quite uh, inexpensive reconnaissance and auger drilling to follow up those targets. In summary, we have the high grade copper gold deposits and we have the potential to make those giant company making discoveries. And thirdly, we also have the uranium, which is, which is interesting as well. We've got a busy year ahead of news flow. As soon as we're listed uh, later on this quarter, uh, we'll hit the ground running with drilling and the geophysical surveys and we'll just keep on rolling. We'll have a busy year ahead. All right. Thank you very much. Come and have a chat at the booth.